transition to what is, I think, the most exciting things that are going on in our field right now, which are a series of new drugs that are going to be reported, one of, one of which was reported at ASCO this year, one of which should be reported at ASCO last year, uh, one of which I've actually never managed to treat sarcoma patients without. So since the beginning of my career, I've actually been involved in evofosamide. And evofosamide is just this wonderful drug which may make that adriamycin ifosamide argument, I'm hoping, irrelevant. So with that being said, you know, since I think the third most, uh, the third in terms of people who've used this drug, person on the planet where I'm first, Bill Tapp is second, I believe you're third. Robin, why don't you tell us about evofosamide and how it works? So evofosamide is a, a pro-drug, an alkylating agent pro-drug um, that's obviously activated in hypoxic um, tissue. Um, so solid tumors uh, tend to be uh, fairly hypoxic, mm -hmm. particularly sarcomas. And this drug um, gets activated in the uh, hypoxic region of the tumor, may also uh, have a bystander effect um, by diffusion of the active uh, moiety into normal, um, normal hypoxic um, oxic regions surrounding the hypoxic area of the tumor. It's given intravenously, um, uh, days one and eight of a uh, three-weekly cycle. Yeah, no, I think this is just a, it's, it's one of my favorite new tools. But, you know, Jonathan, I know you've had some experience with this. What, what are your thoughts on the safety and efficacy? Um, you know, I wasn't involved in the trials, but reviewing the data, it seems to be uh, s s clearly safer than the, s the bio biologically equivalent dose of ifosfamide, although there are uh, certain toxicities that are unique to evofosfamide involving the skin particularly, and uh, its uh, efficacy also in clinical trial certainly looks promising. Yeah, no, I think one of the things we as a community are going to have to spend a lot of time with our community colleagues explaining rash management, especially the ones that occur in the groin, because if they're not managed correctly, they can be really, really severe. But if managed correctly, this is a wonderful drug. It, it does have a tendency to activate melanocytes and make anybody who has higher levels of pigment much darker. Mm. And so, you know, Andy, do you want to comment a little bit about the design of our, our SARC trial? Sure. So, I mean, Robin just alluded to that the, it's um, the drug evofosamide is given on days one and eight of a three-week cycle, whereas the, um, in combination with doxorubicin on day one, uh, compared to doxorubicin alone, uh, it's very reminiscent to a study that we heard about a few years ago, which was of palifosamide, a different ifosamide-like mm -hmm. drug, um, similar design. And I think the design is is interesting in that it's comparing doxorubicin with the drug to doxorubicin, although the the additional drug you could look at as an ifosamide substitute and could lead you to the question of, well, what is the right comparator for the study? Should it be ifosamide and doxorubicin compared to evofosamide and doxorubicin or not? And it, it, it's, it's very interesting because they're different designs I think are both acceptable, but it's a question, is it the right comparison to make? I think we can use some of the EORTC data we talked about earlier of the doxorubicin plus ifosamide versus doxorubicin as a comparator to kind of judge whether this is um, similar or better than ifosamide, but it's still, uh, it's difficult to compare studies in that way because the patient population is different and the study design is different. So I think we're, you know, we're all eagerly awaiting the results from this study. The polyphosamide study was not significant um, in, in outcome in addition to doxorubicin, so we'll see what this one shows, but it still raises the question of, is it the right comparison? Yeah. So I'd like to challenge my MD Anderson uh, colleagues, because they're married to ifosamide so much, to ask if this becomes approved, how will it be used in soft tissue sarcoma? So the available data is quite clear that this is a kinder, gentler ifosamide, right? I think the toxicity profile is significantly better. The convenience and ease of administration is clearly better. Uh, I think, as Andy alluded to, the efficacy comparisons between ifosamide and evofosamide are truly unknown, and it will be very hard to draw cross-trial comparisons. Uh, but this would absolutely be a welcome addition to the therapeutic armamentarium. I think there are clearly candidates or patients who are not candidates for ifosfamide. 
there are our community oncology friends who may not feel comfortable with diphosphamide and probably shouldn't be using it. For them, this might be a good addition for the patient population that they are treating. So it will clearly have a place. I think where on the landscape it falls uh, will depend on the actual data from the trial as it comes out. And then in many ways, I think we learn a lot about a new drug after its approval anyways, right? Mm -hmm. It's the post-marketing, post-approval trials that will then determine how this changes the overall landscape of management for soft tissue sarcomas. It could completely bump ifosfamide off, or it could be reserved for some select situations where ifosfamide would be appropriate but not deliverable because of toxicity or convenience or other reasons. Absolutely.